Today I am leaving for the Himalayan states of India. I am going to the bus station by auto rickshaw. An auto rickshaw is a noisy three-wheel device, powered by a two-stall motorcycle engine, with a driver up front and seats for two, or sometimes more passengers behind. Most lack doors and just have a canvas top. They're also known as scooters, autos and tuk-tuks. They're generally about half the price of a taxi. Usually metered and follow the same ground rules as taxis. These ungainly looking three-wheel devices operate like public transport. Although there are comprehensive local bus network in most cities, the majority of travelers use taxis, auto rickshaws or circle rickshaws. As they more convenient, relatively inexpensive, more comfortable and usually quicker. Local buses can get unbelievably overcrowded, making it best to embark at the starting point and disembark at the terminus. Although my plan is to get into Ladakh before winter sets in, and while the passes are still op open, I have decided not to go straight to Kashmir right now. First I visit the land of the macaques, Himachal Pradesh state. From here you can get to Jammu, which is already the state of Jammu and Kashmir, without a transfer. But to Himachal Pradesh you'd need to change bus at Pathankot, the last stop in Punjab state. There are no advance tickets on the bus. You have to purchase ticket right on the bus according to your terminus. Buses do not have exact departure times, they leave as they get full. They don't even have designated stops. That often means, as many passengers as many stopping places. And the bus companies regularly recruit passengers, even while driving. I managed to board a bus to Pathankot in time. That way I have a good chance of arriving in Dharamsala before dark. India has a comprehensive and generally reliable bus network though. Most travelers prefer to travel by train. As it's a smoother ride and doesn't involve nerve-wracking zigzagging as road travel does. Buses are best suited to short journeys. Besides that there's no rail network in the Himalayan states. The big advantage of buses over trains is that they leave more frequently and getting one usually involves less pre-departure hassle. The condition of buses largely affects the comfort of the journey. Choose a seat between the axles as this generally minimizes the bumpiness of a trip. As for me, I usually prefer sitting window side. The bus shakes on these bumpy roads dramatically. These bus routes will definitely test your endurance. After leaving Pathankot mountains appear on the horizon. Soon we will leave Punjab and cross over to another state. However, there is no indication of this yet. The school day is over, so the number of passengers on the bus will also increase. The students are starting to go home. The land of eternal snow peaks, Himachal Pradesh is where the plains of the subcontinent are swept up into the peaks and falls of the mighty Himalaya. 
It's a truly dramatic state with deep valleys and rushing rivers. Where Buddhist temples in stark mountain deserts contrast. With fertile green orchards and laid back hill stations. This region is at the foot of the Himalayas and is constantly rising. Around 4 km by foot above Dharamsala, 10 km by road, Makliad Ganj is the headquarters of the Tibetan government in exile. And residents of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, as well as being a major traveler's hangout. The largest number of Tibetan refugees lives here. The monks here are not from Ladakh, they came from Greater Tibet. So much so the town itself is now more Tibetan than Indian, but the authorities reluctant to spend money on the exile community has left Macleod's infrastructure and roads overburdened and poor maintained. The geographical hub of Macleod Ganj is the bus stand. From the South Uri roads lead to the village of Duramkat and Bagsu. Buses run a regular shuttle service to Dharamsala. Taxi from the stand on the main thoroughfare costs 300 rupees. Temple Road proceeds south to the Tsuglagkang complex, about 800 meters from the Office of Tibetan Handicrafts. Today I visit the macaques on the trail famous for its prayer flags. As per the 2020 census, Himachal Pradesh has a monkey population of 1, 36,443. Don't be fooled by the appearance of these animals. They are not as harmless as they seem. They usually don't attack unless they feel provoked, but they are definitely not pets. Macaque monkeys supposedly not only belligerent toward humans and dangerous to handle, but also vicious toward other conspecifics, and hence difficult to introduce to members of their own kind. Monkeys and other primates can spread many diseases to people, and can cause severe injuries. In India these monkeys have no value. For the fourth straight year, the Himachal Pradesh government has received approval from the Union Environment Ministry to declare rhesus macaque monkeys vermin, opening them up to be hunted and killed. Once the monkeys are put in the vermin category, the forest department can cull them so as to prevent crop depredation, conflict with humans, and loss of property. The center had declared monkeys vermin for the first time in 2016, in 93 tessels of Himachal Pradesh, by way of a notification. In May 1949, the newly established communist government of China, to liberate the downtrodden Tibetan masses, by taking over their country. This was based on the premise that both nations were once part of the Mongol Empire. The People's Liberation Army marched into Lhasa, beginning a brutal regime which left 1.2 million Tibetans dead and countless others imprisoned in forced labor camps. Since 1949 some 90% of the nation's religious institutions have been destroyed in the name of revolution. Fearing for his life and those of his people, the spiritual leader of Tibet, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso, went into exile in 1959. The exiled Tibetan government was granted political asylum in Gangchen Kishong, below Makliad Ganj. Since then, this place offers plenty of attractions and entertainment for those looking for spirituality or just for relaxation. I will set off the next day, touching Jammu to Srinagar.
I have been in the state of Jammu Kashmir for an hour now. No SIM card works in this state, only locally registered. Thus I cannot use my mobile with my foreign SIM card. In the following part I'll arrive in Srinagar. Before that, however, I still have an exhausting overnight bus ride ahead of me. Thank you for being here, if you like this video please hit the like button and consider to subscribe.